took a week off from filming so I could work on the layout and make the seating look a little bit better. They came out real nice. Spent a bunch of time buying stuff too. The eBay auctions went really well. So I took all the money, turned it back into the channel, bought more stuff that's broken so we can fix it. Hang out with me for a little less than half an hour. Let's take a look at all the new vintage treasures we got coming in. Let me just do a slow flyby with all these treasures that are sitting up here in the table. Sure, yeah. We'll just do this in this grouping and then I will of course go by and kind of show each one off a little bit. Maybe see if it runs, what it does, you know. This is just the fall haul. Right here, holy jeez, bees! Now all the stuff in this haul video, a lot of it I, I just purchased. I just picked it up because of the eBay auctions, made a lot of money, and I figured I was just going to reinvest it in new stuff to take apart and clean and make cool videos out of. And then some of it's been donated by channel viewers like you guys. So I'm just going to kind of go back and forth between the stuff that was purchased and the stuff that was donated kind of mix it up a little bit you know keep it fresh that way if it starts to get a little slow don't think about leaving don't go anywhere because there's gonna be something cooler coming up back and forth back and forth and i'm gonna save the cherries of course till the end because we want to keep everybody instead of just the 33 percenters around want to keep everybody around to check out this this killer some of this stuff is historic it's it's mm, it's awesome let's get into it I found these Rail Chief Streamliner extruded aluminum passenger cars on the eBay. And I didn't just find one. This guy had them all. So I had to go ahead and buy them. Because I really like aluminum extruded cars. I like polishing them. And I like the fact that they're kits from back in the old days. They use this piece of masonite for the floor inside here. You know, like, the, and it's got, you put your own windows in. You put your own ends on the car. Polish these up. I could paint them. You build your own trucks. These these ones are broken. Metal wheels. Oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. I got 22 of these things. Apparently these are the different options that they, they had available right there. We're missing that piece for the observation. The only one. Oh yeah. This will these will be interesting to do a little research on these. But man, am I passing your card up right now. I mean, just look at them all. And, and the great thing is that they're all still, they're still taped shut. They got the original tape on them. They've never even been opened. Whoever built these back in the old days, get in the comments, let me know how long it took you and what you did with them and stuff. Cause man, that is a piece of history right there. When I was doing my Varnies, my F3As, and I would messed up a decal kit and it was very hard to find. I'd mentioned that in one of my videos. Guys, they found these decal kits. They started sending them into me. YouTuber EC Idaho, Eric out there. He sent in a uh, set of decals here back in February of last year. I wanted to say thank you for sending these in. Now there's a feller out there. He goes by the YouTube name Michael George. And he sent in a couple of different donations. This all, you know, this stuff all showed up in two different boxes. Some rarer to me Tyco stuff. Some people, I love it. I love it. It's cheap to collect, inexpensive to collect, some kind of. And, uh... Some cars I didn't have, he reached out, told me what he picked up for dirt cheap, and he donated these up here to the channel. And then this here is a Cox, Big Pine Lumber Company. I don't know what that, I don't know what it, maybe it's a GP20, I, know, I didn't look it up. So we did one Cox on the, on the show way, way back at the very beginning, and then got some N units to lose my mind on. I don't know, this one's a lifelike, and these two, I am not sure what they are, but these are gonna make all great repairs. Michael George's little feller, apparently they'll, they puts him to sleep, settles him down by showing my videos to him. I guess he's my youngest subscriber that's out there, Michael George's little little guy. And then Michael apparently works on cars and he, and he sells them or something like that, and sent me these old emblems. When you're restoring cars, and if the emblems aren't any good, these have got the tabs broken off, you know, for car guys. Something groovy. I used to be a Mopar guy, and then I just, I didn't have enough money to to restore Mopars because you gotta have three times the amount of money compared to a Chevy. Odd. But, uh, yeah, what do you do? Thank you so much for the channel donations on this. I'm Michael George. Remember that 1688 torpedo set that I had just, did just a little bit ago? 
Well, I barely got that sold and packed up and shipped out and be dinged if I didn't find a local 1668 torpedo set. I mean, I went like two days without a pre-war Lionel set. This one absolutely fell into my lap. Downside, though, is it's not as pristine as that first set that I had. This has got some some damage. It's going to take some car waxing and some lubing to get this one going. But, yeah, the, I, I haven't looked up the year yet or nothing like that on it. But another pre-war torpedo. This one's got the 262 underneath of it. Yeah, shine this one up. It'll be gorgeous. This here says it's a 1948 American Flyer, a Gilbert, an HO scale. It's a Hudson. This one was sent in from Cliff Hurd out there in Illinois. This is a smoker. It's got a smoker unit in the tender. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm like quietly collecting every version of these that they made. I got about four of them now. I like how you send up this price tag. He says, don't pay any attention to that. That's, that's not what it cost me. But it does say it runs nice. I, you know, if you're going to have a $200 price tag and runs nice on it in a vintage store, let's just see if they were lying to us. Now, it does look amazing on the track. I have to say that, yes. You know, I need some cosmetic stuff. Pushing up to 10 volts right now. 12 volts. That thing, it ain't doing nothing. I can't believe that some little old lady that owns a vintage store trying to supplement her income would lie about something like this. Oh, that thing unbelievable that's fine because that's what we do here is we fix them we also pulled in some marks units some f units right here this one's of course original i really like the the drive it's got on it it's got gears that reduce and reduce and it's not even close to scale proportion but whew, i'm gonna expect it this one here well it's a repaint obviously but i figured well it's been repainted to be another good one to work on Learning to repaint. Yeah. Or I could put two of them together yeah, and make an AA unit. Repaint them, repaint them both. Because this one, it doesn't even have the yellow stripe on it. What in the... And then this car right here. Now, I don't believe that this is a normal... I think it's been repainted and re-decaled. But I do believe that the 57, the Thunder Chickens that are on there, they're, they're marks, I believe. Get this car back to the normal color and them cars, I don't know, strip them, something. Yeah, little marks to add to the collection. There's this nice old fella out there. He's one of the subscribers. His name is Dennis Dew. And he found these somewhere online. And he thought, hey, I just watched Ron do some old Mark stuff. He might need these for something. So he bought them up and had them directly shipped to the channel here. Donated them to the channel. Really neat. Here's an old school Mark single reduction motor here and then this one it's so it's a battery it's a battery operated 12 volt those are stamped those gears are stamped out of tin and folded love the history also sent in a real nice little letter right here love the letters thank you very much dennis We're nice of you these guys right here are o gauge they are aluminum extruded cars I didn't really know what I had when I bought them. They were just aluminum and, and they're dirty. They are scratched up and filthy. And I figured, well, at least I take them home and I can work on I can work on my polishing skills. They are lighted underneath there. And then I got to researching and I found out that they are made by American Model Trains. Well, it says American Model Toys, but they're AMTs. AMT. Remember when we did the KMT revival with the HO aluminum cars that were ultra rare? AMT, bought out by KMT. Kusan model trains, bought out by Chris's model trains. These are the cars that made Lionel make better passenger cars. These were very little known, but they were so gorgeous looking that everybody started buying these. And then Lionel started making, they came out with their aluminum brand of cars unbelievable three rail o gauge got these for an absolute steal the camera actually makes them look nicer than they are i mean they are absolutely is it the light oh there yeah see now yeah okay that light sure oh they look like 
they were sitting up, they were sitting up over there. And there's one sharp-eyed feller that seen him in the background when I was talking. And I'll be danged if he didn't know what they were. Guys that know their Lionel stuff and their O gauge stuff, they know their stuff. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it. This here, this here's another American Flyer HO scale Hudson tender. This one came in from Howard Hulvey out there in Virginia area, donated it to the channel. I was short a tender for one of the Hudsons that I've been working on. He reached out just out of the blue, said, hey, you need a tender. I'm like, by the way, yes, I do. And it showed up over here. So this is fantastic. There are more pieces, parts to fix up all the stuff. Getting into some other really cool things that I found. These guys right here, they are the GE-8-40 Bs. These ones are made by Walthers, and they're they're just just Walthers. I wonder if these two buggers is gonna run. Seven volts. I heard something. No. No. Not. Not surprised. Oh. No, I am surprised. So one's just pushing the other one down the track. <laughs> well, and I gotta throw out a clear up to freaking. A lot. Yeah, them little sweethearts are going to need some work and none to them, sure. After I got done filming that successful Atlas N-Gage repair, you know, successful meaning that it that it actually got repaired and it worked, this fella named Andrew, I, I'm never going to get that last name, Sabore, he's out there in New Hampshire. He sent down this box. I didn't have a box for that set. And unfortunately this box didn't fit. But then he also sent an atlas and look at this little beauty right here. A 282 Mikado. He sent this little letter that says, small parts underneath there, they'll fall out. This is a 1968 is what it says. This of course needs a little loving, a little work into it, no big deal. We'll give her our best shot. Also sent along a great letter about things I love. Love the letters from people, this pen the things they move inside there hey you guys remember those pens that you'd stand up and then it had that girl in the swimsuit and then it, and then you okay i miss those this here on the box says it's a usra heavy drilled for details and, and it came with all of its details down here you <laughs> yeah look at all this it's a it's in a kit form for sure this is going to be a fun one to put together as soon as i find a chassis for it now this box what is this thing oh it's a bowser it says it's a bowser and it had a bunch of paperwork a bunch of paperwork so now i only need this part down here i'm halfway there yeah but it's neat to see all the old this old schooly stuff right here and the challenge of building one in a kit oh yeah painting it up just right stoked fella out there his name's he goes by the YouTube name Deplorable Constitutionalist. He found this little kit right here and he thought that it reminded him of the way my cabin, the way train cabin looks like from the front. So he picked this up, sent it to me, and he also sent in some coal from the Peabody coal mine down there from his neck of the woods that you crush up and put in cars and he sent a coal car. I think this is the car right here. I, 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 it got separated. It got separated out and the coal, I've... I've got it in a box that I can't, I can't reach right now. This was really nice of you out there, deplorable. Thank you so much for donating cool stuff to the channel. Yep, yep. The other one that I was really excited about was these here Athern. These, depending upon who you talk to, they're either SW1500s or they're SW7s. Cow calf. And you can eyeball up in there and I see flywheels on both of them. That means that these are powered. Oh, let me get my hands out of the way so you can really, really gaze. Yeah, sure they need a little cosmetic loving, a little cleaning up and a going through. Oh, but I've been looking for some of these for quite some time. Let's see if these will run. 10 volts. They're filthy. Yeah. The cow's trying to run. I don't want to run them too hard. So they are officially seized up and they need to be gone through. There's quite the story to this one here. So a fella named Nathan Moore down there in South Carolina sent in this Lionel GS4, Southern Pacific Daylight, made by Bachman. And he, he sent in a letter and it had a lot of great information in it about stuff. And he was in the service and he was moving around and he, he didn't get a chance to pack it 
and very good and it ended up breaking the axles off the wheels. He didn't know how to fix it. He thought for sure, well, if anybody can do it, it'd be me. And I looked around and, you know, you to buy a parts loco cost as much as it costs to get this one shipped here. And it's like, well, then you don't know what you get. So this one sat up on the shelf and it looked good from a distance for quite some time. And then all of a sudden, this feller named Christopher Linky, he's up there in the Canadia, eh? He, he says, I've, I've got a Southern Pacific that's broken too. And I was hoping that you could fix it. And I'm like, well, geez, you know, I've already got one sitting here. I, I don't know. I, I, I need to look into it harder. And he says, I'll sweeten up the deal for you. I'll send in another parts loco that you could take parts off of to fix my good one. This is the parts one. This is the good one. And I mentioned this one to him. He says, if you need anything off the parts locomotive, it's yours. You, you keep it. I'm like, well, that, that sounds like the best deal I've ever gotten so far on getting these back together. So here we are with these. Come to find out, as I was doing research, this is a generation two, and this one, and this one is a generation one. So these guys have common parts. This one is re-engineered, so it's got different parts. We got a video coming up. It's gonna be the very next video I make. I've got the parts to fix these, to fix the phase ones, gen ones, and the gen two. We're gonna be able to get two running locomotives out of all this stuff right here. Oh, it's going to be a fantastic video. And you wouldn't know what Christopher did to sweeten the pot to, to you know, because I'm gonna get this all fixed up for him. He sent down, this is a Mantua, it's a Decapod, a two, 10, zero, old school Mantua. And he just said, it's yours. You can have that, you can have the, the Mantua because he knows I collect Tyco stuff. And the parts, off the parts loco, it's like, you've got my attention, Christopher. Thank you very much. This is gonna be a great, great video here. We're gonna show you the correct way to fix these broken Bachman GS4s. Yeah, I picked myself up one of them there pen lines. GG1, Pennsylvania. It don't work. It, the, ad, it, the ad said it didn't work and it lights up and they absolutely, absolutely mean it. But these little fellers here, they go up and down. I don't know, and I know they got a name and I just, I just don't remember it right now. This is gonna be a restoration. I thought that I'd have to repaint it, but the paint on it is really, Pretty decent. All brass wheels, just needs a good cleaning and a lubing. But this, oh yeah. I understand it's a little bit smaller than the stock ones. Well, it looks to be about the same length as the old Tyco ones. And you know, Tyco, they've they've always been 100% to scale. <laughs> yeah, got this one too. So we got a couple of GG ones to add to the collection. I think this one's probably gonna run a little better than this one. I'm just guessing, just guessing. A lot of you have already seen this little fella right here. We've already done the review. We've already, we've already fixed this one. We painted him up and stuff like this. This little Fleischmann 060. It came in from Steven Tedesco out there in the Massachusetts area. And he also included, you know, I get letters with all these. And he gave me a CD of his band, his blues band from back in the 90s and stuff like that. These letters and things I get from the viewers out there. It's so nice. I really, I really, really appreciate that. Connects us all. But... Just making sure that we get this video. Everybody that's sending something in, I want to get them recognized here. It's one day, two days after the Thanksgiving. This is what I'm thankful for, is my people sending cool stuff in. One of my earlier videos, I mentioned that I needed these tow bars for the for the Tyco between the tender and, and the locomotive. They're, they're made out of a non-conductive material. And this nice feller named Ted. It's just Ted from Vegas. Well, him and the little lady, they happen to have a laser cutter. And he cut up some tow bars and a little bit longer tow bars and some of these AHM uh, for adjusting the trucks right here. Cut some pieces out, sent me a nice little light here and said if I ever need anything or other laser cut stuff, reach out to him. He's a quiet guy, you know, didn't, doesn't want to doesn't want to be made famous. So he didn't even give me his last name so I couldn't accidentally say it. Thank you, Ted from Vegas. Nice. It's always nice getting little pieces parts to fix up stuff. Thank you. 
You know, that Y6B was such an enjoyable thing to work on. I decided I needed to keep adding to the collection of the Malay locomotives. So I was shopping around and I had to get, I had to get one of the cab forwards. Yeah, the old AHM River Aussies. Ugliest thing I've ever seen. And it's the first one that actually runs halfway decent. <laughs> okay. But still doesn't say I can't take it all apart, lube it up, show you guys how to do it. So soon we'll have a video on a River Aussie cab forward. Mm. With the old arc welder in the cab. I can see it in there. It's so big, you can, you, oh goodness gracious, monster. I ended up getting a nice letter and this really groovy 1940s catalog here from a fellow, Lord Wood, Lloyd Wesley up there in Vermont, sent this down, put a nice letter in it, Taxi loves the channel, and I've got new, cooler information to read up on about stuff back in the old days. Love it, love it. It's all about sharing the information here. This little fella right here, it's it's been repainted. These parts of it, Seabird Systems, Athern, because you can tell because of the way this is right here. According to my research, this would be an SD40-2 or GP40. I, I guess, you know, but it ain't got a motor in it. And there's, there, you know, this is, oh, it's got really nice updates to the, to the fans. It's pretty nice. So this one will be one of them scare together, buy a bunch of new stuff for it, but the price was right. And then the next one right here, this one took me forever to figure out what it is. And after a while, I figured out that it's a, it was, it's a repaint, it's a kit. This is a Rail Power Products chassis, an EMD SD90 Mac H. And it's an aftermarket company that used Athern knockoff stuff or Athern components to build higher quality kits back in the day. And all of this stuff here is still, still available in a kit form. So this one is going to be an interesting challenge to scare up everything. This is broken. To get it going and do a proper repaint to it. This looks like it was painted really heavy. But it's, it's neat, you know, for what it is. I'm digging it. This fella, Brent Podell... He's over there in the motherland of North Dakota, and he just out of the blue, this just showed up. I didn't, sometimes things show up and I don't even know. Most of the time people tell me, hey, I'm gonna send you something, keep an eye out for it. This one just showed up, depainted it. This is one of the neatest paintings that I've ever, that, you know, however it was done is amazing. This guy's eye for the female form is spot on, unbelievable. Plus he wanted to make sure it's got the right beer in it. Well, I cut my teeth drinking Old Milwaukee and Pab's Blue Ribbon. So he's 100% right right there. He's got a Pab's Blue Ribbon bottle in it. And then there's a train set. I don't know if you guys have noticed that part yet. <laughs> there's trains at the bottom. So it matches. Well, I can hang it on my wall and the little lady won't get that. that well, my little lady kind of looked a lot like this a while back. Her hair's a different color now, but you know. I'll just say, tell everybody it's a younger version of her. And he also sent in these made in North Dakota pretzels. Best, yeah, I didn't even know the name of that town. I lived in North Dakota for eight years. Didn't even know it. So thank you very much, Brett. You need to reach out to me though, on the Facebook page, Classic Model Trains. I need to know how you did this because it's just the coolest, nicest looking. Is it airbrushed? Because if you know how to airbrush, I need some, we need to. <laughs> Yep. This feller named John Millard down there in one of my hometowns when I was a little, little feller in Arvada, Colorado. He's seen that video where I messed up my F3 Burlington and he sent up a set of decals too. I've got like three sets of these decals now. Sent a nice little letter here. Thank you guys. I, I, you know, I, I mentioned something. Some guys, they rise right to it, take care of the problem. They know where these are at. I was having a hard time finding these things and it stopped the repair for quite some time i couldn't find any finally found one and i messed them up and then guys sent me in more so <laughs> thank you so much well i had to order this in because i found one and i decided i needed to have it and i ain't never seen the sleeve over the front of the windows it's like well has this thing ever even ever been opened holy moly so we gently get her shook gently shake get out out i need just a i need a I need just a little bit. I gotta grab you, come on. Uh, I have never ever 
seen this thing on it. But what's under it? Uh, a Challenger. Yes. Super stoked. And I, and I just have to wonder if it's ever been out of its box. Another eBay find. Does it work? I don't know. We'll put it on the track. Uh-oh. Missing a handrail right there already. <laughs> Where's my refund? I want a refund button at. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So whether it runs or not, well, we're going to try it out right now. Sure. Uh, absolutely. I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect anything else. What did the seller say about this locomotive? Taken out of the box to put a Katie coupler on it and to test it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all right. We got a repair video. It's not even getting any juices because the, the light isn't even coming on. And we're definitely not pulling any amps. Bastard. Unbelievable. Of course, we don't want to forget Freddy Persall. He's the one that sent in that Hawthorne Village caboose collection. We made a video of it almost the very next day, back in July of this year. Thank you, Freddy, for that really great collection. It's sitting up here on the on top in a box right now because I'm waiting for display. More display area. <laughs> yeah. This is this great snowblower thing right here. I had one of these as a kid. It runs off of like the Atherton High F system with the belt drive that goes up to the shaft and you push it down the track and then this thing spins. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, look. Huh. I guess the original one was a steam engine. Hmm. No, no. That's just, that was the original. It was pushed all the time, but this was for running the whiz bangy up here. Yeah, this is a nice one. I mean, the, whoever did the kit did a pretty decent job on it. I hate snow. I really do. We need to mention up the Lynn McCurdy. He'd showed up in person and he donated so many locos to the thing. This one came from Lynn. Uh, this one here came from Lynn. This one, this one, this one. These ones. This guy. Oh, this guy. The Aristocraft 10 wheeler came from him. Plus, there's so many parts that showed up in here. These guys here. I mean, it was like three boxes of stuff that he had donated. I've got it moved around and organized up some. Some things have been put into work. Some things have been fixed and gone. So, thank you very much, Lynn McCurdy. Making that fantastic, fantastic donation. One last locomotive to show you before we close the door on this here video. Hey, I just wanted to mention something. When you see these green stickers up here, some of the guys are wondering, what the heck is going on with that? Well, when new locomotives show up, I, and you know, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know who made them. I don't know what era they're from, road numbers. So I research them and I write the information down on the little green sticky notes. So that way I can, when I get around to making the fancy signs like this, then I got all the information right there. That kind of points out the new ones so you know before i do this kind of stuff if you sharp-eyed people out there see that you'll know what's brand new before i even talk about it but let's talk about this one now, i got one of them it's 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 right there but it won't work it's broken it's got gearbox issues like nobody's business so i had to get another one yes it's supposed to run i don't know the money i paid for it it should run give me 13 and a half minutes to get it on the rails and all the wheels on the rails We'll take a look at it and see if it runs. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Well, I can't believe it. I get, oh. Yeah, not really smooth. No, it's not. That's the second, that's the second locomotive on like that's sort of ran. Oh, that wheel is off. I bet you it's going to crash in these switches over here. Oh, that took a super long time. But now I think I've got one of the coolest lineups out of them all sitting right here. Got the cab forward, the Challenger, the big boy, and the Y6B. And I guess here in America, we're going to have to call them Mallies. Mallies. Europe can call them Malays. Because Europeans go to hospital, but we always go to the hospital. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it wrong. Hope you guys had a great Turkey Day weekend. I'm Ron, Classic Model Trains.